Hello everybody, my name is Dead to Me, and welcome to part 3 of my inflation RPG walkthrough. Today we will be featuring a couple efficient runs for money grinding, talking about the bare minimum requirements from moving on from money grinding, as well as talking about a few things you can move on to afterwards. So why don't we get right into it and move to map 3 so I can tell you guys some of the things you'll need to know going in. So let's talk a little bit about the layout of map 3. As you can see, you'll be in a maze type map, and you can be spawned in 4 separate locations. The easiest way to tell which location you've spawned is by following these steps. First, if you are completely surrounded and you can see land in every direction, you are in the bottom right spawn location. Next, if you are not in the first location, go south twice, and if you are able to go right, then you will be in the spawn location on the left side of the map. The next tell is that if you've gone south two zones, and look to the southeast, if you see the tips of dragon wings in the bottom right of your screen, then you're at the northwest spawn location. And if none of these are true, then you'll be at the northeast spawn location. Once you've figured out which location you've spawned in, you can use the map I've provided for the most efficient path to the middle of the maze. Now there's a few things that can be dropped around here, so I'll detail all those and then I'll highlight each boss. First of all, the tomahawk is dropped by the golden armor in the 24,200 zone and is a great early game weapon however has extremely low percentage increase therefore it will be switched fairly early in runs. Its stats are 35,000 base attack and only 110% damage increase. This drop is absolutely not necessary to move on. The two next items I'll talk about are in the 24,900 zone. The first one is dropped by the Woman Knight, and it's the s stock. This weapon is very good as a late game weapon, and has higher damage percentage than any other weapon up until this point at 350%. But do note that the s stock has a zero base attack, so without a gem or some stat points allocated to attack, it will be rendered useless. And the second item that can be dropped in the 24,900 zone is the Half Plate Armor, which is a really good early to mid game armor. And really the only armor that can trump this armor is the rare armor during late game. The half plate armor gives you 5000 base defense and 260% defense increase. The next item that you can find in the maze is the mace. And it's dropped in the 25555 zone by the troll. If you've money grinded already this weapon is relatively useless and I wouldn't waste time grinding for it yet. Finally, the last item that can be dropped by enemies in the maze is the Samurai Longsword. This may be seen as a life taver to some of you money grinders out there if you're struggling to hit that 1.4 million gold in a run, and it is dropped by the Armored Samurai in the 27,200 zone, which is the same zone as the Dragon Bosses. Now, let's move on to the bosses and speak on each individually. First, let's speak about the green light dragon. It is marked on the map, so from the middle, take the northeast exit and follow the path to the boss. The green light dragon is a bit stronger than the enemies in his area, so be cautious when entering a battle with him. But he can drop two different items. First, he can drop a green light sword, which is a very good sword at this point, and it will trump the samurai longsword for most of your run except in the beginning. The green light sword gives you a 3000 base attack and 370% increase in attack. This sword is highly recommended to grab for a 100,000 level run. The next item the green light dragon has a chance of dropping is the light armor. The best late game armor set in normal mode, and this is also recommended to grab for a 100,000 level run. However, it is not required because the rare armor is sufficient. The light armor gives zero base armor, but has a defense increase of 340%. Now let's talk about the red light dragon. He is about the same strength as the other light dragon, and he drops two things as well. He can drop the red light sword, which is a decent early run weapon, but is not required to do a 100,000 run, as the samurai longsword will suffice. This sword gives 9,000 base attack and a 320% attack increase. The red light dragon also gives a chance at receiving the light armor, which makes it so you can get two chances at the armor per run. This aspect makes this armor an item you should shoot for because you won't waste much time grinding for it. The last boss in the maze which can be found in the middle is the yellow equilibrium. This boss should be a cakewalk if you can kill the other dragon bosses, and he drops the battle ring plus 2 which increases your battle points by 5, however it is a very rare chance to receive it here. Moving on from the map, let's talk a bit about the runs I feature in this video. 
In my first run, I tried to efficiently money grind, but I came out with a little under 500,000 gold. The reason I didn't come out with more is simply because my gear wasn't good enough at the time to be absolutely efficient. In order to be efficient while performing a run like this, you have to kill the fox on the first kill and then move to the sphinx for the second or third kill. Then from that point, spend all of your stat points on luck. While collecting money, utilize all money bonuses and make sure question mark question mark question mark zones are your top priority as they drop a lot of cash as well as the recovery necklace and you're going to need the recovery necklace eventually if you plan on making it to hard mode. An efficient gold run will yield anywhere from 800,000 to 1.5 million or even more based on if you get lucky with your money bonuses. Also remember, if you want better results, don't neglect the 1222 and 777 zones as they will frequently get money multipliers in question mark question mark zones too. Now the reason it was fine that I only made 500,000 is because that went towards more gear to make me more efficient with my runs. In the end I decided to buy a battle point ring plus one, which will allow me more battles per run, which in the end also results in more gold. And I also decided to buy a plus encounter ring, which will allow me less accidental battles, which means more battle points for money grinding. Now let's go into my second run and talk about some of the things that went better here. So in my second run I ended up a bit more lucky. I managed to kill the fox on my second kill and made my way to the desert. I left the sphinx alone for a while as I knew I'd have a better chance if I did a bit of grinding first. During this run I came up with a couple cool drops. The first being the scimitar. I got it from the 1333 zone. Its stats aren't the best, but any weapon or armor I get is just a step towards being able to access the exclamation point and triple exclamation point zones. The more important drop I got from this run was the combo rate ring. This ring comes from the question mark question mark question mark bonus and it is very useful as it allows you to do some combos without investing points into agility. In total, I made about 640,000 on this run, and I bought two things with it. I decided to buy the Samurai Sword, as it will definitely speed up my money grinding, because I will start with more damage. Note that you could instead go for your Luck Gem or XP Gem first, but it's up to preference. The most efficient method would be to buy your Luck Gems first, and then go for your Battle Point Rings, and then the rest. And the second thing I bought was my third plus encounter ring, finishing off the collection and making me even less likely to come across unwanted battles. Now let's go into the dynamic change after you've finished your money grinding. Once you're done your money grinding, up until that point mostly all your good gear has come from spending gold, the exceptions likely being the battle axe and the magic armor. The bad news is that there are a few to no more decent items that you can buy with gold after that point so you'll have to start relying more on enemy drops to push you further. The good news is that my guide will feature all of the items you need throughout your adventure, as well as locations and strategies for quick item grinding. Also, make sure to note that if you receive an item, you must complete the run. If you return to the title and begin a new game without finishing the last one, any items received in the run you overwrote will be lost. Now, because I've told you guys all you need to know about money grinding at this point, I've decided that episode 4 will be a compilation of my efficient money grinds up until I'm finished with them. Instead of having commentary the whole time, there will be music in the background. The video won't be too educational unless you want to follow the order in which I buy stuff. But if you're interested in following my character closely, this will fill the gap instead of me hopping straight into the aftermath. Because I'm going to do this, I will upload both this video and the money grinding montage at the same time so that I can keep on schedule with a video every two days for the people less interested in that montage. And the last thing I'll talk to you guys about today is the way that you should allocate your stat points once you are done with your money grinding. There are many different reasons to allocate stat points differently, but today I'll talk about strategies for allocating stat points that should cover most of the runs you will do. The first strategy is for any run in which you are trying to get an item drop. First off, decide if you need battle points from the Sphinx or not, depending on how close you are to the enemy that will drop that item. Next, only fight the bosses that are absolutely necessary to move on either for more battle points or if that boss could potentially drop something. As for allocating stats, you'll want to keep your HP high enough so that the enemies don't bring your HP down to half. This can also be different when wearing a recover necklace, but a rule of thumb with the recover necklace is not to let enemies lower your health below 30% in the attack before you heal yourself. 
As for agility, you won't spend any points here at all in 95% of cases unless you rely on combos in your playthrough. As for attack and defense, this is where most of your stat points will go. Try to balance the two skills and mind your equipment bonuses when doing that. Once you've reached an area in which the enemy that drops the item is, equip your luck gems and begin fighting. If it's still dangerous in that area and you get close to death, put some more points into HP, attack, or defense. Then once you're confident that you won't die, every skill point from that point on should go into luck. If you don't get the desired item during that run, just rinse and repeat. The second strategy you will use for allocating stat points is used during your 100,000 level run, or any run you're trying to kill a tough boss for a base level, or any time you're trying to get yourself a new highest level. In this strategy, you will want to kill every boss along the way, including the light dragons, and depending on if you get in quick enough, the rainbow crystal bosses yield more battle points in total than the boss in the middle of the grid, so it's beneficial to go there. You'll also want to be strategic with which battles you get into and use XP bonuses to your advantage. Now, as for allocating stat points in this run, it's very easy. Basically use the same method as with previous strategy when it comes to HP. And as for luck, you won't put any skill points here at all because this run has no use for it. It doesn't affect the critical rate enough to matter and we aren't in search of items here. For agility, it can definitely be used strategically here, but I personally wait until I can rely on gems to boost my agility so I never allocate any stat points here. One thing to note about agility, though, is that it's very useful before you receive the recover necklace, as you have little at that time to help you out in battle, and it's mostly just back and forth, which will give you an advantage if you can combo. The rest of your stat points will go equally into attack and defense, which will push you as far as your limit. This causes roughly 90% or more of your stat points to be allocated here. So if it seems like you're neglecting your other skills, you're probably doing just fine, but remember to keep your HP high enough, as the further you go, the more damage you'll receive. This note is more for when you have a recover necklace, because you can be invincible to certain creatures by healing back too much. Now if you forget to upgrade HP, and an enemy one hits you, even if you could have potentially been invincible to that creature, you'll still die. It can be literally one HP that determines whether or not you're invincible to a certain enemy when you have the recover necklace. And that's all I've put together for today, folks. I hope you really enjoyed, and remember that there will be a bonus video today, which is the money grinding montage. And other than that, if you found this informative in any way, feel free to like my video, and comment if you have any feedback or questions. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode of my Inflation RPG walkthrough.